أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وقرة عيوننا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيء يا بني آدم خذوا زينتكم عند كل مسجد وكلوا واشربوا ولا تسرفوا إنه لا يحب المسرفين وقال تعالى كل من حرم زينة الله التي أخرج لعباده والطيبات من الرزق قل هي للذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا خالصة يوم القيامة كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون This khutbah as I sit here I realize is inspired by someone that is in this room A young man present with us today in Jummah came up to me and he had the habit of coming to our Wednesday night halakas. And because of his work, he could no longer come. So last halakah, he came up to me and he said, Sheikh, you know, we started a new series. We're learning. It's amazing. But my schedule changed. And I won't be able to attend. I'll come online. I'll watch the podcast, this and that. And I said, yo, it's all good. No problem. You'll be good. Inshallah, you'll still benefit. I came across a narration that is narrated of Umar ibn Khattab, and I want you to listen closely. Umar ibn Khattab, he says, Ma min mawtin ya'tini fihi al-mawt, ahabbu ilayya min mawtin atasawaqu fihi li ahli, abihu wa ashari fi rihli. Umar ibn Khattab, he says, is there anyone that you would doubt about his worry and care for learning the deen? Is there anyone you would doubt about his ghira for the deen, how much he loves the Rasul? But Umar ibn Khattab, he says, that there is no place on the earth, on the earth, that I would rather my death come 
than at the marketplace where I'm buying, selling, and trading, earning a living for my family. Allahu Akbar. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. One day he gave a nighttime talk on the topic of zuhud, asceticism, to give up the world, to not have it. It was an evening dars. The next morning, he's uh, outside of his house and he picks up his uh, sack. And on, in his sack, he has all of this merchandise. And he's walking to the marketplace. And one of his students who was in the dars sees him walking. And he says, Ya Sheikh, in the nighttime you talk about zuhud, giving up the dunya. And in the morning you're the first one at the marketplace. He looked at his satchel and he looked at his student and he said, this merchandise is my asceticism. This is the means by which I don't need to ask anyone. I don't need to beg anyone. And this is the means by which I provide for my family. The Prophet wasallam has taught us that one of the greatest things you can do is seek out the bounty of Allah. And what is the bounty of Allah? Wealth. Seeking out. Now you might say, oh, Shaykh's given one of those prosperity, whatever they call it. I'm just teaching you the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is my intention. I wanted to narrate a hadith, a sound narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, in the Jibreel, in the ruh, Al-Qudus, nafatha fi ru'i. He says that Gabriel spoke to my heart and he said, First thing first, no one in this room will die until you get all of your provisions. No one is in control of your wealth. No one. It's with Allah. But, Fattakullah, be conscious of God, and here's the key. وَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ Beautifully seek out your risk. Beautifully seek out your risk. وَلَا يَحْمِلَنَّكُمْ إِسْتِبْطَاءُ الرِّسْقِ أَلَىٰ أَن تَتْرُبُوهُ بِمَعْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ Do not let the fact that risk seems to be coming slowly force you to seek it out in a way that is haram. The meaning of this hadith is to beautifully go after your risk. وَبَتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ when Jummah is over, Allah said in the Quran, the moment Jummah is over, leave, go, don't sit here. I read a narration in Qut al Qulub that said there was the Sahaba going for jihad. And there was this young man who was young and, and strong. And, and, and the Sahaba, they looked at him and he was going to the marketplace. He was doing some type of work, clearly earning for his family. And the Sahaba are with the Prophet. And they go, oh, look at this young man. He's so strong. He's so strong and young. He should be using that for the sake of Allah. And the Prophet said, ah, la taqul hadha. Don't say that. Because right now, he's earning for his family. That is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I'm trying to show you is that we always hear these khutbas about how evil wealth is. How bad wealth is. But it's not about how bad wealth is. It's about how bad wealth is when it gets into your heart. Stack it, man. Work hard. A buddy of mine, we were on the phone. He calls me every Wednesday, local guy, every Wednesday. He said, Sheikh, I got the job. He already had a job. He got the job. What was it? He said, I gave him my offer. I countered and they countered and I got, I said, okay. IT dudes, y'all be switching up jobs like crazy. It's like, I already got a gig, took another, okay, cool. And, and, I, and, and he's like, you know, Shake, it's more money. But I realized, based on what we learned, I don't need more money. But I realized how much good I could do with that pay raise. I said, Allahu Akbar, we're done, yo. You're giving khutbah next week. So the point is to realize how good wealth is for a good man, and that's a hadith. How good, and woman, how good wealth is for a good person, how much khair you can bring into this world. Re remember, the sign is that we should not be greedy for it and that we should be able to part with it when necessary. There's a narration in Bukhari. 
Abbas was a very big man. Abbas was a tall, big guy. Like only him and Omar, like they're big people. Abbas was a wealthy man, but he had actually spent a lot of his wealth in the battle of Badr, ransoming some of the captives of war. So he was in a little bit of debt, but generally from a wealthy, like he had his stuff together. There was some money that came from Bahrain. The money came to the Muslim community. The Prophet Sallallahu he told the people, put it down in the masjid. The narration says that the Prophet walked into the masjid for Salat al dhuhr or Asr. And when he walked in, he didn't even look at it. Guys, I'm talking like stacks, gold, silver. Like, all of ours is digital now. We're kind of just like, no picture, wealth, sitting in this masjid. Now the whole masjid, the community knows whatever money came in, the Prophet's going to distribute it. So Dhuhr that day was packed. <laughs> packed. Everybody came. Allah takbir ula. Allahu akbar. The Prophet turned around and he smiled at everyone. He goes, oh, I think you guys heard about the money that came in. And he starts to distribute it. Abbas gets up. Abbas says, Ya Rasulullah, I need some money. Straight to the point. He said, okay, go get some. Abbas got a cloth, he filled it up with money, and he went to pick it up, but it was too heavy. He looks at the Prophet, so I said him, and he goes, uh, can I get some help? The Prophet's sitting there, he goes, nope. Nope. That's all he says is nope. So Abbas like, dang, I'm stuck, what do I do? So he takes some of the money out, and he goes to pick it up again, it's still too heavy. He goes, can I get some help? Prophet says, nope, not helping you. Third time, he takes them out. He asks again. Prophet says, no. He takes a little more. Now he ugh, got it up. And he walks off with it. He walks off with it. And the Rasul Sallallahu he says, in the dunya halwatun khadiratun. This dunya is, is sweet. It's green. <laughs> it's sweet. What color? Allahu Akbar. It's not my words. It's the Rasul Sallallahu words. In the dunya, hilwa, khadira. This dunya is sweet and it's green. But Allah is watching to see what you do with that green. That's all it is. But here's the thing I want you to understand. What does it mean, seek out the wealth beautifully? All of the prophets of God worked for their living. Every prophet of Allah worked for their living. Understand that. What was Zakaria? Carpenter. Come home dusty, sawdust all over him. Who? Zakaria, alayhi salatu was salam. Can and Najjar. What was Dawood? Blacksmith. Working with iron. Working hard. Do you know the story about how he got the miracle of chain? His miracle was that he put together chain mail armor. That was the miracle of Dawood. He's the first to come up with this chainmail armor. But there's a story the Prophet taught about that. One day he used to walk through the city and, and he would disguise himself. And he would ask people about him because he was the leader. Hey, what do y'all think about that leader, Dawood? And so he's going and he asks someone and someone goes, yeah, he's really good. Only if he made his own money though. He eats from Baytul Mal. He eats from the... What is it? He eats from like the government money. He heard that. He made dua, oh Allah, I never want to be dependent on anyone. And that's the key we need to realize. That wealth is a means to protect us from dependence on anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wealth is a means of, of keeping us strong. I forget the Sahabi's name. I have it here in my notes. But one of the Sahaba, he was passing away. Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, one of the Sa'ad. He was passing away. And when you're dying, you're like, oh, I'm going to Jannah. I need to take everything with me to Jannah. So he's like, Ya Rasulullah, all of my wealth is charity. The Prophet's like, what? You can't do that. He's like, okay, half. He's dying. He thinks he's dying. He doesn't end up passing away. He goes, okay, half my wealth is charity. The Prophet's like, you can't do that. He goes, okay, a third. The Prophet goes, okay, a thuduth wa thuduthu kathir. He goes, okay, a third you can give in charity. And by the way, a third is a lot. And then he says these powerful words. For you to leave your child strong 
with wealth is better than for you to leave this world and they have to go around to people saying, can you help me out? Not my words, Rasul Sallallahu words. I want us to realize this blessing. So Dawood, when he realized that I'm taking money from Baytul Mal to live, he said, no, what is this? He asked Allah, Ya Allah, give me a means to earn with my own hands. He's a blacksmith. Blue collar, by the way, guys. Blue collar's coming back. Plumbers make good money today. Don't sleep. College degree might not do too much in a few years. The Prophet worked with their hand. The prophets worked with their hands. And if we look at the Rasul, he specifically mentioned working hard to earn a living. For a person to go and chop wood and carry it on their shoulders is better than them than to go around asking people. The Prophet ﷺ himself was a shepherd. He grew up, he was young, he was a shepherd. He learned how to earn money as a young boy. I don't know, but my age, I, I, when I was 12, I had a paper route. Nowadays, people like 20 years old never had a job before. That, that idea of learning to earn and put food on your table. Why is that so important? Because the Prophet taught us that the best food you will ever eat is the food that you earned with your own two hands. Nothing tastes better than that. Nothing tastes better than that food. And then the Prophet said, encouraged trade. You just buy and sell. What did Umar ibn Khattab say? I don't mind if I die in the marketplace. As long as I'm earning for my family. What did the Prophet ﷺ say about the tujjar? A tujjar, the tajir, sudduqun, aminun, yuhsharu ma'al anbiya wa shuhada wa salihin. That the truthful business person, you don't skimp off the top, you don't have like, you know, trying to make extra pennies here and there by cheating people. Uh uh. The truthful businessman will be resurrected on the day of judgment with the anbiya, with the salihin, with the good people. For what? What did you do? I was just. I was at my shop, yo, doing dhikr. Subha, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The purpose of today's khutbah is for us to understand what wealth means for a believer. Do you realize in the prayer we say, Atayatu lillah wa salawatu wa tayyibat? Let me break this down for you. Atayatu lillah, all verbal praises for God. Wa salawat, all bodily praises for God. Wa tayyibat, all financial praises for Allah. All financial praises for Allah. We've heard too many khutbas about the evilness of, 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 of wealth. That we leave the masjid feeling sad when I walk into my, my, my office. Oh, I'm, I feel bad I'm making money. What's wrong with you? The Prophet said, as long as you are good, as long as you do good with that wealth, as long as you seek it out beautifully. Now, we got to go hard though. Are you earning it from haram though? Are you earning it from haram? Sorry to take a detour there, but we have to. Because this whole khutbah about how great wealth is, is all for naught. If you're seeking it from a haram means. And if you are halal, then I'm going to take you a level up. Don't quit, by the way, please. All right. Tayyib, is it pure? Is what you work on beneficial for society? Think about that too. Now, I used to give this khutbah in the DMV area where almost everyone was a contractor for who? <laughs> Naeem knows. And it was a tough thing to think about. But think about halal and think about tayyib. And then don't look down upon any job that you can do to make money. Man, some of our fathers, they did whatever they could to put you through school. Drove Uber, delivery, whatever. Doesn't matter. And you, you have the unfortunate complex that you're not proud about what they did. As long as a person kept a halal job, that is the greatest accomplishment. Please let that reverberate in your heart. You drive Uber, alhamdulillah, no haram in this house. Family is doing well. And for children whose parents are working blue collar, the prophets worked blue collar. The prophets worked blue collar. Be proud. Be happy. Understand the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, that he has saved you from haram. 
And so this narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, I want to end on time. Man kanat niyatuhu talab dunya Whoever's intention at work is I just want more dunya. I want more cars and more house and more prestige. That's not good. Shatatallahu alayhi amara. Allah will cause your affairs not to match up. Things will never keep matching up. And waja'al al-faqr bayna aidik. He will put poverty in front of you. What that means is no matter how much you make, you keep thinking we don't have enough. That's what that means. You may have money. Everyone else looking at you like, yo, you stacked. But you're like, eh, no, I'm kind of worried. All you see is poverty in front of you. But, وَلَمْ يَأْتِي مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَا كُتِبَ لَهُ And at the end of the day, you're only going to get what you were written for. But, whoever goes to work, they leave this masjid. They go, they sit at the computer, they do whatever they got to do. مَنْ كَانَ نِيَتُهُ تَلَبُ الْآخِرَةِ They are seeking the pleasure of God through that job. And guess what? جَمَعَ اللَّهُ شَمْلَ Allah will bring everything together. And you don't have to feel bad about it. That is one of my biggest intentions through this khutbah. Stop feeling bad for earning a living. That's not the sunnah. You should be proud. You should walk out there, slide that card on the way out. <laughs> slide it, yes. But you should be proud about that job you have. You should be proud that, yo, you got to miss halakha? It's all good. You know how happy I was to hear that? Because that tells me it's a young man. He's not married, by the way. A young man who's got his affairs together. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So as Muslims, we need to remove this complex of feeling bad about having a good job or feeling bad about having to study. When Umar ibn Khattab moved away from the masjid, he had a neighbor. Now they both had farms. And he said to his neighbor, okay, we got to make a deal. We both can't just sit at the Prophet's masjid all day because we can't live. So you go one day and teach me, I go the next day and teach you. So they prioritize learning, but they never lost sight of the fact that they earning a living. It's, it's, it pleases Allah. And that's my khutbah for today. May Allah make us of those who realize that wealth is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us of those who um, respect and honor anyone earning a, a living beautifully. And may Allah make us of those who can uh, find halal risk. I just want to finish off the hadith that I began with uh, and then we'll go for salah. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said something beautifully and I kind of glossed over it. Um, beautifully seek it out. And here's the reason why we often go to haram. He says, Do not let the delay of your risk force you, push you to go to get it from somewhere haram. I promise you, whatever it is that is written for you, if you just hold on, you'll see it's coming from a halal place. It's coming. The test is whether you're going to take it from haram. Look, you're going to eat whatever you're going to eat today. You're going to eat that. The test though, Allah wrote that. Your test is where does this guy go for it at? Is he going to seek it from halal or is he going to seek it haram? It's going to come. But your test is where you're going to seek it at. So he says, Rasul Sallallahu he says, don't let the fact that it's slow make you then go to haram to get it because you can't make what's going to come come any faster than it's written to come. These are some ahadith. The verses that I began with from the Quran is, Kul man harrama zinatullah. Who can make haram the beautiful things that Allah has made in this world. أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ He made them for us. قُلْ هِيَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا It's for us. فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا When Allah says, إِنَّ الْمَالُ وَالْبَنُونَ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Does that mean don't have children? No. That means be careful that it never gets into your heart and that you always keep Allah primary in your heart. I'll end with one hadith 
and we'll go for prayer. The Rasul Sallallahu said, Ni'mal mal salih limar salih. How great is good wealth for a good man. When Abdurrahman bin Auf came to Medina, he was broke. The person who brought him in said, hey, I'll give you half of my money. He said, nope, show me where the mall is. Show me where the bazaar is. I'll make my own cake. A few weeks later, Prophet Sallallahu saw him with makeup on. Uh, what's up? He said, I got married. How'd you get married? Did you pay your mahar? He goes, yep, big chunk of gold. <sighs> okay, time for a walima. What did he do? He went to the marketplace, borrowed something, sold something, da, 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 every day, just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. He didn't take a handout. He earned and he worked. He's a Sahabi. He's loved by Allah. Your job is a means to gain the love of Allah. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa anim ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارضى هم أن جميع أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وعن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وأن بقية الستة من العشرة المباشرة وأن أهل بيت نبيك أجمعين وعنا معهم بفضلك وجودك وكرمك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عزنا يا أرحم الراحمين الله مكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وأغننا بفضلك أمن سواك يا الله make our halal enough so that we never ever need haram, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and enrich us with everything that is good for us, Ya Arham ar Rahimin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Oh Allah, give us the good of this dunya. Wa fil akhirati hasana. Give us the good of the akhirah. Waqina adab al nar. Ibadullah, Rahimakumullah. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Wa ita idir kurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai. Wal munkari. Wal baghi. Ya'idukum na alakum tadakkarun. فاذكروا الله تعالى يذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله 